So, um, anyways, today is our last service before Christmas, and we're not super traditional always with everything and so um, I, I really asked the Lord to give me something magnificent for today's service and it's so far away from actually Thursday in my eyes that's four days away um, but really I want him to bring forth a now word a magnificent word from the kingdom of heaven and if, it, if it's somewhat traditional with the birth of Christ that would be amazing and awesome but that's not what he gave me today and so I need to be obedient in the word that he gave me today and I know that he'll incorporate life to it um, because that's our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords now if we were having a Christmas program like in the past uh, Sunday nights and stuff that would be a little bit different and um, I was really hoping for something that I had envisioned in my heart and my mind to do today, but the Lord has something else in mind. And so I'm going to be obedient to Him. So I'm going to ask you to go to Ezekiel chapter 37. Oh, I don't have my iPad. I don't have none of that stuff. How am I going to go there with you? Yeah, right? Thank you. So a lot of times I stay in the back of the church, but today, uh, in the last few days, I've been, I need that too. Um, I've been in the front of the church, so I come up here with nothing. Um, so this, let me catch up with you all. And I'm going to put on my other speaker. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for who you are. I thank you, God, that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and that you have come today to set the captives free, that you've come to bring us a word full of life that will move us into new places and new seasons with you. I thank you, God, that there is none greater than you. You're the great I am. I thank you, God, that your plan is good and you're going to see us through that plan, even through the muck and the mire and the things that we um, have to embrace on a daily basis. I thank you, God, that you and you alone can only do what no man can do. And God, I thank you that you're speaking to us all the time and you're there with us. And so I thank you, God, for what you're going to do in us and through us today. I pray, Father God, that the now word goes deep, that you just bring more revelation, that you bring out what you want it to be today, Father, that you bring it out by your spirit and in truth, and that we each hear it in our own language. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Hallelujah. So um, Dan came down last night and... Um, I was reading the word, and so I was telling him these bits and pieces um, about it, that as I was reading this word, okay, as I was reading this word, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, this is my church. So I'm going to read you the word. So the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of a valley. It was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in an open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. And the Lord said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord, God, you know. Again, he, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely, surely I being God will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I will put Sit new, if that's wrong, I'm sorry, on you and bring flesh upon you. So he's going to start to knit us back together as a body of Christ. That's what I'm hearing. He says, I'm going to cause the body that's laying out all over the place, drying up. I'm going to cause them to come together. Amen. I'm going to rebuild them. I'm going to rebuild them. So I, being God, will cause these things to happen. Flesh upon you, 
cover you with skin, put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So prophesied as I was, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And suddenly, a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinew, whatever, and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also, he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Now, he built it. He said, prophesy to these bones. Bring them together. God did all that. But now he's saying again, prophesy to the breath. Because that's where the life is. The breath. Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus saith the Lord, come forth from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So, I'm going to stop there just for a second. So what God was saying to me is there's many slain people out there all over the world that have fallen away from the Lord and they became dry bones because they were away from the breath of life. Nobody wakes up one day normally and says, you know what, I'm just going to quit. I'm just going to stop serving God. I'm not going to believe. I'm not going to go to church. Although we make that first choice. And I don't feel like it. I'm going to go this, do this instead. Please don't make that choice. Make the right choice. Because the devil is cunning and he starts very slow. And he just brings distractions in our ways and things that seem to be funner. And we choose those things. And, and it's not that God doesn't want us to have fun. Because he wants us to have fun. I mean, we're his children. Don't you want your children to have fun? Aren't you excited when you see your children open their gifts and it's their birthdays or it's Christmas or whatever? maybe or you take them to Disney World or or you take them wherever you're going to take them and you get just as much joy out of watching their joy that's our father so it's not that he's trying to say oh you can't have fun he just wants us to set time aside for him because he knows that we can dry up and we can become these dry bones and so the Lord was speaking to me about it so come forth for the winds oh breath and breathe on these slain because they may live. God is saying they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath came into them and they lived and they stood upon their feet an exceedingly great army. Amen. He then said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. I said to Dan, I said, oh my gosh, this is the whole house of Israel. So I'm hearing God right. He's saying this is the church. Yes. See, we're, we're grafted in as God's people. So here all them several many thousands of years ago, right? This is the house of Israel that was being prophesied over. Well, this is the house of river of life. And this is the house of faith covenant. And this is the house of whatever church there is out there that's truly serving God for God, not for man. That's lifting up the name of Jesus. And so he's saying, listen, I'm going to do this, but I need you to prophesy. See, prophecy is more important than most people think. Because it isn't us that have the power. It's the power of the Holy Spirit within us. He's the only one that can do what no man can do. So he is saying, listen, prophesy. Read this, prophesy, speak it out loud, because this is for my church. My church is laying out there all slain, beat up from religion, from wrong teaching. Forgive them, for they know not what they do, says the Lord. They didn't mean to hurt you. They didn't mean to teach wrong. It's just that flesh gets in the way in our own opinions, in our own wants, and sometimes controlling spirits, and then people start to... Go to places they shouldn't go. I've been watching a, a series um, on the life of Joseph, and it's very powerful. And in each segment, there's a testing. Well, there happens to be a test even on success. 
Because see, God might anoint you and you might be called, but if you can't handle the success of what his calling is, and so you go through all these character tests, and see if you will be obedient to God, because if he says, if you'll be faithful with little, I can give you much. But you can't pick and choose what you're going to be faithful with. Just be faithful to me. When I call you to it, I'll see you through it. I'll give you a supernatural ability to obey me and to do what I'm asking you to do if you will just agree with me. Where two or more are gathered. You and the Holy Spirit. He's in the midst. He's the strength. He is your life. He's the one that will give you the ability to do what he's asking you to do. Right? And so I hear the Lord saying, and this is so cool. He's saying, listen, I want my church alive. You can clearly see the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy all over the nations, all the churches that are closed, and people are scattered. But the shepherd's still alive. Amen. The shepherd is still alive, and his name is Jehovah Raha, the Lord my shepherd. He's not going to quit going after his sheep. He's not going to stop just because other things are stopping, but we are his sons. Now, not in gender, please but in inheritance. And he's saying, prophesy. Speak to these dry bones in your community. Speak to your church. Speak to other, even for other places. It doesn't have to be river of life. I mean, you just sow from your need. Sow from your wants. Sow in prayer. Sow in prophecy. Speak these things because this is God's will. This is what he wants. He wants to call people back. He wants his church to come out of the grave. Yeah, yeah. So let's keep going. He said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, O oh bones, our bones are dry, sorry. They say, in, they indeed say, our bones are dry. Our hope is lost. And we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy to them, says the Lord. Behold, my people, oh my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come out and up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, when I have opened your graves, oh my people, and brought you from you up from the graves, I will put my spirit in you and you shall live. I don't know about you, we need a renewal. Yeah. We need a fresh touch. It's not wrong to need those things. It's not wrong. Because it's very easy to go into those dark places and into the grave. But I want you to know that he's calling forth the nation of Jesus Christ. He's calling forth himself out of you and I for the world. Amen. We're going to celebrate the birth of Christ in just a very few days. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He left heaven and came to earth knowing that he was going to love us more than what we were possibly able to love him back. But as we walk in revelation and learn who he is and learn the things that we learn about him, we start to be transformed by him. Our minds change, our stubbornness, it's there always fighting us, but when you yield, when you're teachable, when you're not highly opinionated all the time, when you have to stop having everybody prove things to you and just have faith in what the Word says and by the revelation of an inner peace, you start to see God in a greater level. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. So I just want to go to a couple more places. I did not know that Graves was in this passage, but a week or so ago I said, I believe we've been, we're in a place where God is telling us to stay in Psalms 91 and the song, Graves to Gardens, because he was calling people out of the graves. So then I end up with this word last night, this passage, not the word, the word is by the Spirit right now. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Lord, you're confirming what you've been saying to me. 
I want you to go to Habakkuk. I think that's how you pronounce it. And I was talking to Marcy this week, and most of you don't know that um, she was fighting, you know, some, uh, I'm sorry, wait a second, it might not be the right place. La, la, la. Yes, it is. Habakkuk 1. So, um, she was just fighting some old stuff that was trying to come back on her because the devil will never be happy with you walking in health and wholeness. So he'll perform miracles at times. The Lord will, not the devil. But then he'll come and he'll try to put old stuff back on you. And so then you're in a whole nother battle. And so she's been in a battle for a while. And um, the other day she woke up with, um, great is your faithfulness. And we had just had that the other day, like uh, two services prior to her getting that. And she wouldn't have known we got it because we did it as a closing song. And most people don't get our, well, you guys don't get our closing songs out there. But... There's always more that's happening. Well, not only that, she, God also gave her um, a passage. Well, when she gave me the passage, I knew it was for us in the church. I just didn't know exactly what. I knew it was for me personally. And then the Lord showed me this morning to share it with the church because it's for us as well. And it's verse 5. It says, look among the nations and watch. Be utterly astounded, for I will work a work in your days which you would not believe though it were told you so I claim that for the kingdom of heaven right now I want you to go to Ezekiel chapter 36 and most of you guys know this but this is one of those stones that need to be visited on a regular basis as the Holy Spirit leads and we're going to go to verse 35 now we're going to go to verse 33. And I believe this is all connected. Because first of all, we've got the Lord telling us to prophesy to the body of Christ, to the nation, and call these things as though they are, not only to rebuild all those that are laid slain all over the place, but then prophesy breath into them from heaven. And then it tells us to prophesy more. Okay? And then God says, all right, now in Habakkuk, guess what? You're going to see this with your eyes, and, and you're not going to believe it as though you've been told. But it's going to happen, Amen. says the Lord. Amen. So in verse 33, it says, This saith the Lord God, on the day that I cleanse you from all your iniquities, I will also enable you to dwell in the cities, and the ruin shall be rebuilt. That's this church. The desolate land shall be tilled instead of lying desolate in the sight of all who pass by. So they will say this land that was desolate has become like the garden of Eden. Graves to gardens. This land that was desolate and become, ha has become like the garden of Eden, and the wasted, desolate, and ruined cities are now fortified and inhabited. Then the nations which are left all around you shall know that I being the Lord, I being the Lord have rebuilt the ruined places and planted what was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I, the Lord, will do it. I'm going to keep going. Verse 37. Thus saith the Lord God, I will also let the house of Israel inquire of me to do this for them. In other words, this is what I'm going to do, but he's telling the house of Israel, he's telling the church, I want you to pray and ask me to do this for you. I will also let the house of Israel inquire of me to do this for them. I will increase their men like a flock. So he's saying, listen, you need to inquire that of me. Not because you want a building full, but you want to bring the lost into relationship with Jesus. And you want the ones that are living in Christ to come and grow in Christ. Because there's so much more to be done. 
for the kingdom of heaven. Like a flock offered as a holy sacrifice, like a flock in Jerusalem on its feast day. So shall the ruined cities be filled with flocks of men. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. So you were the word in the beginning. One with God, Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus, Christ our King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. Truly, guys, he didn't want heaven without us. So he brought heaven down. His name is Jesus, the King of the world. My sin was great, but your love was greater. What could separate us now? So body of Christ, people, I'm telling you, pursue him with everything in you. Because he loves you. And even though you feel dry, keep coming to the watering hole. Get to the word. Reach out to other believers that can pray for you and walk with you. Find a church that you can be ministered to. What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Christ my King. Death could not hold you. <laughs> the veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. There's that word again. I lost my place. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no rivals and you have no equals. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. Go ahead and start that, Tim. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus, our King. So, Father, I just thank you and praise you for your love. I thank you and praise you for your faithfulness, even when we haven't been faithful. I thank you, God, that you're with us. Help us to prophesy, not for ourselves, not even for our churches, but to your church, to your people, so that your word can be fulfilled because you said, Thus saith the Lord. Help us to know you better, to walk with you closer, to love you. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and we love you and we worship you. So Holy Spirit, do what only you can do in us first and then through us. In Jesus' name, all God's people said.